Now let us see a routing protocol that is RIP. RIP stands for Routing Information Protocol. RIP is a dynamic routing protocol. It is a distance vector routing protocol which has AD value of 120. AD means administrative distance or trustworthiness of the protocol. RIP uses hop count as a routing metric to find the best path between the source and the destination network. Hop count means the number of routers between the source and the destination. The path with lowest hop count is considered as the best route to reach a network and therefore placed in the routing table. RIP prevents routing loops by limiting the number of hops allowed in a path from source to destination. The maximum hop count allowed for RIP is 15 and hop count of 16 is considered as network unreachable. Now let us see how routers use RIP to reach from one source to a destination. In the given example, if R1 wants to communicate to R4, there are three routes to reach R4. The first route is via R2 to R3 to R4 with a hop count, with a hop count of 3. The second route is from R5 to R4 with a hop count of 2. And the third route is from R6 to R7 to R8 to R4 with a hop count of 4. Now if RIP is enabled in this network, the best route would be with a hop count of 2 that is from R1 to R5 to R4. Now let us see some of the features of the RIP. The first feature is that updates of the network are exchanged periodically. That is, on every predefined period, all the network information is exchanged between all the neighbors in the network. The next feature is Updates are always broadcasted, which means any update about the network is sent to all neighboring routers in the network. This causes slowness as the device has to process unwanted information as well. The third feature is full routing tables are sent in updates, which means not just the changes in the network, but previous information which the neighboring router already has is also sent as an update. This causes an overhead on the routers. The fourth one is, routers always trust on routing information received from neighboring router. This is also known as routing on rumors. Now let us see different versions of RIP. Currently there are three versions of RIP. RIP version 1, RIP version 2 and RIP NG. RIP version 1 and version 2 are used in IPv4 addresses and RIP NG is used for IPv6 addresses. In RIP version 1, the updates are sent as a broadcast packet. In version 2, the updates are sent as a multicast packet. And in RIP NG, the updates are sent as a multicast packet. The IP used for update in version 1 is 255.255.255.255, that is, it is broadcasted through every devices. In version 2, a multicast IP of 224.0.0.9 is used for updates. And in RIP NG, Updates are sent on a multicast IP of FF02 bar 9. The version 1 doesn't support authentication of update messages. The version 2 supports authentication of update messages. This feature is not available in RIP NG. RIP version 1 is considered as a classful routing protocol. The version 2 is considered as a classless protocol. RIP NG is also supported as classless protocol. Now let us see what are the different timers in RIP. First is update timer. The default timing for routing information being exchanged by the routers operating RIP is 30 seconds. Using update timer, the routers exchange their routing table periodically. The next is invalid timer. If no update comes until 180 seconds, then the destination router considers it as invalid. The destination router marks the hop count as 16 for that router. The third one is hold down timer. This is the time for which the router waits for a neighbor router to respond. If the router isn't able to respond within a given time, then it is declared dead. It is 180 seconds by default. And the final one is flush time. It is the time after which the entry of the route will be flushed if it doesn't respond within the flush time. It is 60 seconds by default. The timer starts after the route has been declared invalid 
and after 60 seconds that is time will be 180 plus 60 to 40 seconds all these timers are adjustable we can change this timer using the basic uh, using the command that is timers basic now let us see a practical of rip in the given example there are four end devices each of the end device is connected to a switch which in turn is connected to a router there is no IP configurations done on any of these devices so let's go ahead and configure IP addresses on end devices first as you can see PC0 is connected to a switch which in turn is connected to a router the gateway IP of PC0 is 10.0.0.3 which is the interface gigabit 0 slash 0 slash 0 of router 0 so for PC0 the IP configuration is 10.0.0.1 with default subnet mask and gateway address is 10.0.0.3 which is the gigabit 0 slash 0 slash 0 on router R0. Similarly for PC1 IP configuration is 10.0.0.2 with default subnet mask and gateway is 10.0.0.3 Similarly, for PC2, the gateway IP address is 20.0.0.3, which is at gigabit 0 slash 0 slash 0 of router R1. So for PC2, the IP address is 20.0.0.1 with default subnet mask and gateway is 20.0.0.3. Similarly, for PC3, the IP address is 20.0.0.2 with default subnet mask and gateway is 20.0.0.3. Now let's go ahead and configure the IP addresses on router. First we'll configure the gateway IP addresses on both routers on interface 0 slash 0 slash 0. So for router R0, we'll go to CLI, we'll say no, we'll go to enable mode, then configuration mode interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 0 IP address 10.0.0.3 with default subnet mask and no shut command to bring the interface up similarly for router R1 CLI that's no we'll get into enable mode configuration mode IP address uh, interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 0 IP address of 20.0.0.3 with default subnet mask and no shut command to bring the interface up as of now we configured the end devices with the IP address and the gateway IP address on both the routers. Now we'll go ahead and configure the WAN side of both the routers. For router R0, the WAN interface is gigabit 0 slash 0 slash 1 with IP of 30.0.0.1. Router R0 interface gigabit 0 slash 0 slash 1 IP address of 30.0.0.1 with default subnet mask and no shut command to bring up the interface. Similarly, for router R1, the WAN interface is gigabit 0 slash 0 slash 1 with an IP address of 30.0.0.2. We'll go ahead and configure that. Interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 1 IP address of 30.0.0.2 with default subnet mask and no shut command to bring up the interface. So as of now we have established IP configuration on all the interfaces and end devices. We'll go ahead and now configure the RIP protocol on both the router. Now router R0 is part of two network, the 10 network and the 30 network. So we'll go ahead in router 0. The command for configuring RIP is router RIP Then network, since 
router 0 is part of 10 network we first say network 10 and network 30 and do write okay similarly for router r1 router r1 is part of 20 network and 30 network go to router r1 same command router rip network 20.0.0.0 and network 30.0.0.0 and do write to save the configurations so now we have established rip on both this router so let's go ahead let's go ahead and see if we can send a packet from pc0 to pc2 so let's go ahead on pc0 go to command prompt let's try to ping pc PC2, which has an IP address of 20.0.0.1. Okay, so we are getting a good response. The first packet was dropped as request timeout because the router was building its ARP cache. So if we try to ping again, we'll have all we won't receive any packet loss see similarly now if we try to ping from pc1 to pc3 the first packet will be dropped because the router is creating its arp cache so ping 20.0.0.2 the first packet will be dropped as routers are creating its arp cache and then we'll get a response Now again, if we try to ping 20.0.0.2, the first packet won't be dropped because the router has created its ARP cache. Now, if you want to see if a router is running RIP or not, you can just go into the router and just type show IP route. exit from the configuration mode and right show IP route it will show which protocol is being used by the router currently you can see that router is learning the network of the router 0 is learning the network of 20 and 30 from R and if you check here R is a RIP version I said R stands for RIP. So you can see a router is running RIP or not by using the command show IP route. You can check the same on router R1. Show IP route. You can see that R1 is learning the route 10 and 20 via RIP. So that's all for the RIP practical. Let us see one of the important topics to be discussed that is routing loops. Routing loop occur when a packet is continually routed through the same routers over and over again in an endless cycle. Because they can render a network unusable, RIP employs several different mechanisms to prevent routing loops. The first one is split horizon. Split horizon is one of the features of distance vector routing protocol that prevents routing loop. This feature prevents a router from advertising a route back onto the interface from which it was learned. Consider the following example. Router R1 has a route to the subnet 10.0.1.0/24 that is advertised to router R2 by using RIP. R2 receives the update and stores the route in its routing table. R2 knows that the routing update for that route has come from R1, so it won't advertise the route back to router R1. Otherwise, if the network 10.0.1.0/24 goes down, router R1 could receive a route to that subnet from R2. Router R1 would think that R2 has the route to reach the subnet and it would send packets designated for that IP address to R2. R2 would receive that packet from R1 and send them back to R1 because R2 thinks that R1 has a route to reach the subnet thereby creating a routing loop. The next method for preventing route, routing loop is 
Route Poisoning Route poisoning is another method for preventing routing loops employed by distance vector routing protocol. When a router detects that one of its directly connected route has failed, it sends the advertisement for that route with an infinite metric that is 16. Consider the following example. R1 is directly connected to 10.0.1.0/24. R1 runs RIP and the subnet is advertised to R2. When the R1's interface fails, the route advertise is sent by R1 to R2 indicating the route has failed. The route has a metric of 16 which is more than the RIP's maximum hop count of 15. So R1 would consider the route to be unreachable thereby avoiding routing loops.